All right then. Training camp's right around the corner. It's Vice Lombardi, by the way. Just another soliloquy. I like to do these. Leave a like or whatever, so I know that y'all like it too. Um, training camp's around the corner, and it's one of my favorite times of year. For one, they bring up training camp in this time to where we haven't had football in so long that we'll watch anything. Uh, so that's one reason why we really like it. But training camp is there to answer questions. So, you know, you may have 90 or so guys on your team, and you may like 80 of them. But you can only keep 55 now. The new number is 55, by the way. So you can only keep 55 now. So what we get when we get these training camp matchups is who's going to be here, you know? Um, we're going to see guys fight for their spot. We're going to see how guys translate to playing for the Cowboys, you know? So what I mean by translate is that we get a lot of situations with these with these players in the offseason. Like, um, will they get better? Uh how will they play in our system compared to where they came from? How will they transition from college football to the league? Uh, <laughs> one of our guys hadn't played football in seven years, so how will they look then, you know? So I think these one-on-one -on -one matchups, and I hope I get a chance to go to training camp. The one position group that I'm most excited to see is Team Toxic, is our defensive ends. The most question marks, the most ambiguity, the biggest mystery on the team right now is what the hell we're gonna do with uh, with some of these pass rushers. And not only will we get to see these pass rushers and drills and all that, but we get to see them line up against Leo Collins. We get to see these guys line up against Tyron Smith and Brandon Knight and Mitch Hyatt. Like we get to see these matchups so we can kind of gauge how good they really are. We're gonna talk about 10 guys today, the roles that they're gonna play, which side of the, D-line they're gonna be on and um, their immediate competition and how I think they'll fare. Will they make it or will they not make it? So in the back part of this video, I'm gonna talk about the guys that have been here already because we know how we feel about D-Law. We relatively know how we feel about Crawford and all those guys. But um, now I wanna talk about our new additions, you know, Ronnie, Johnny, Mike, Bobby and them. So first off, Ladarius Hamilton, right? Formerly of North Texas. And I think he's gonna have a hard time making this team, man. A rough, rough, rough time making this team. I would love to see him. I would love to see him play. Um, and what he does, like competing and in preseason and all that, just to kind of see if we can get something from him. He's a good college player. Uh, he was one of our undrafted guys. But, you know, this position group is the path of the most resistance. You know what I mean? What I mean by that is think about a guy like Garrett Marino, our um, free agent, undrafted free agent from UAB, the one tech, right? His path to get on this team is him, Antoine Woods, Dontari Poe. You know what I mean? He's the third guy in our one tech situation. Ladarius Hamilton has another undrafted free agent that was paid more than him, a guy that we got in the fifth round, two guys that we got last year and the year before, Two guys coming off suspension. Three three guys coming off suspension. <laughs> One off injury. You see what I mean? He just got a long road to go, man. I just don't think he's he's good enough to shoot himself in front of the, you know, the class or whatever, man. So Ladarius Hamilton, your first job is to beat Rondell Carter. And on the other hand, we got Rondell Carter from uh, JMU, James Madison University. He was the undrafted free agent that we paid the most money to. Um, I got a film session on him, and he's another good college football player. Uh, just like I said with Darius, like Rondell got a hell of a a hell of a climb to make, man, with the guys that's in front of him. Do I think he makes it? I don't think so. But I think what's what's you know interesting about him is that I think he's gonna be practice squad eligible guy. Um, but he was a very touted um, undrafted free agent. So if you put him on practice squad, can somebody come and snipe him off of your damn practice squad? That could absolutely happen. But Rondell Carter is another guy. I don't think he makes his team. So Bradley and I, our fifth round pick, I feel really good about him. And I think the, the, the two guys that we just talked about, the undrafted guys, I think they're going to be gunning for Bradley's spot. I don't think they're good enough to take Bradley's spot right now, but um, if anything, Bradley's going to be a guy that's going to be fighting to make the team. Will he make the rotation to get in the game and all that? I don't think so because there's a lot of guys in front of him. We don't know yet, though. Hang tight. 
We don't know yet, but um, Bradley is a guy that I think can come in and give you some third round production, I think. Um, I think he's gonna have a really good preseason. I think he needs to improve in the, the run game and all that. And of course he needs to get bigger and stronger. So when it comes time to real, real football, like week one through 17, I don't think we see Bradley and I as one of those guys, but I do think that he's gonna tear stuff up in preseason. I think he's gonna be a guy that we're looking for next year. Now I just talked about the undrafted guys being behind him, but the guys in front of him, Bradley and I, you've got to beat Jalen Jokes today. We drafted Jalen Jokes last year in the seven rounds, so y'all kind of in the same tier or whatever. You got to beat Jalen Jokes, um, Bradley and I. And Jalen Jokes is a guy that has an off-season program up under him, right? He has a off-season of lifting weights. He's been drinking the NFL juice and all that. Whatever you know, juice that they pass around to these pro football players, these league guys that just make them big in off season. Jalen Jokes got one of those. Plus he knows what he's getting into in terms of running into pro football guys. Bradley and I ain't got that. So that's gonna be a tough fight for Bradley, but I think they're in the same competition group. Um, and in terms of the guys that's in front of them, front of them, Jalen Jokes is gonna have to compete with um, Doris Armstrong and Joe Jackson, right? So Joe didn't give us very much last year, but to be fair, Doris Armstrong didn't either. So every year we have this debate, right? It's between the two players. One player being the player that's established that may not be hitting his potential, but then there's the player that's brand new, that's not as good as potential guy, but his long-term value may be better and you gotta gauge who you wanna keep based on that. This is what I mean. Doris Armstrong is better than Bradley and I right now. But if you don't think Doris Armstrong has done enough in his development and you don't see it happening, you could cut Doris Armstrong because Bradley and I could project to be a better player than him. And you can't just cut Bradley and I if you think he's gonna be a better player, regardless of who's better now. So you may keep Bradley and I for what he could be, but you'll cut Dorrance Armstrong for what he's not right now. I think we got that same conversation this year with Dorrance and Joe Jackson. Dorrance and Joe Jackson versus where Bradley and I is at, possibly where Jalen Jokes is at, possibly where one of these undrafted guys are, possibly as we move on, Alden Smith. The good thing about Alden Smith is, this is how good Alden Smith's contract is, right? Alden Smith is currently guaranteed zero dollars. If he shows up in shape, he gets $25. If he makes it to training camp, he get a hundred dollars. If he makes it through a couple weeks of training camp, he'll get a thousand. If he makes it all the way through preseason game number four and makes the team, then he'll probably get like a hundred thousand or something, two hundred thousand. If he makes the seventeen games and all the way to the Super Bowl, I think he caps out at like two million or something like that. Whatever. You can't hate Alden Smith's contract. So that brings some more value to him. So Alden Smith, we're not forced to keep him, right? We're not forced to keep Alden Smith. If Alden Smith is terrible and Jalen Jokes is better, then there's no obligation to keep Alden Smith. So good job there for the Joneses. So if Alden Smith shows up and he's not as good as Jalen Jokes, cool. We'll just cut Alden Smith, give him his $55 and we'll move on with our life. But if Alden Smith shows up and he's better than Tyrone Crawford, not saying he will be, but if he's better than Tyrone Crawford, Let's say Alden Smith get eight sacks by week 10 and we only paid him $2 million. That's show Robert Quinn. That's show Robert Quinn. Fantastic value you get for that. So you get no risk here. You ain't risking nothing, but your reward could be, and I, I'm not, I ain't saying that it will be. I ain't saying that it will be, but it could be quality pass rusher for two to three million dollars. You can't beat that with a stick. So Alden Smith, your job is to come in and beat anybody. Just be better than anybody. Now, of course, if you're better than Rondell Carter, then you know we can cut you and Rondell, whatever. But 
I think Alda Smith's real fight is between um is is Dorrance Armstrong and Joe Jackson. I don't think Alden is competing with Randy because at the end of the day, Alden Smith can be a left defensive end for you. Alden Smith can be a Sam linebacker, like a blitzing Sam linebacker for you. Randy could be your right defensive end that'll stand up. So I don't think those two guys are like competing necessarily. So if Alden Smith comes in and he's better than Joe Jackson and Dorrance Armstrong, you got to put on your boogie shoes. And I said their name a lot because I think they're the median in this thing. Right, Joe and Dorrance. I think the bottom. I think they're the gatekeepers. I think the really good, the really good defensive ends on our team are better than them. But the new guys, Mike, Bobby, Johnny, Rick, they're gonna be like they're not as good as them yet. So in order for them to prove that they're gonna be top level guys, I'm talking about Bradley and I, um, Jalen Jokes. I'm talking about the other new guys. Alden Smith, for those guys to be considered to be in the rotation on this team, I think they got to show up day one and be better. Not day one, but by the end of training camp, they got to be better than Joe Jackson and Dorrance Armstrong. And I think the Joneses are going to have to make a decision after that. And while we're on the subject of that, I mean, I think Dorrance Armstrong and Joe Jackson got to come in and, and, and compete with each other and prove that they're worth being on this team. A handful of things can happen with, with these two, with Dorrance and Joe. They both can be really good. They both can take the next step and they both make the team and somebody else get, gets, gets pushed off the bridge. I don't think that happens. What I think is really going to happen, I think there's going to be a competition between the two of them. I think one of the two of them is going to get cut. And I think it's Dorrance because Dorrance got more time in. Joe is still young and he got some, some room to grow or whatever. But if Joe Jackson and Dorrance Armstrong come in and they close, like both of them close. I think you cut Dorrance, you keep young Joe, you keep your, your, your D line rotation young. You keep that room young and you just roll Tyron Crawford and them out there, man. I think that's what you got to do. And with that being said, uh, Tyron Crawford, D law, Randy Gregory, all those guys got to do is come in and be who we, who we think they're going to be. They just got to come in and be D law and be Tyrone Crawford. I know a lot of y'all hate Tyrone Crawford, but we didn't have this 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 bad of a problem in the run game when Tyrone Crawford was here last year. So that's one thing there. Um, you know, D-Law, sack numbers, fine, whatever. You know, man, look, what happened last year, what was supposed to happen? You know what I mean? D-Law was getting sacks at the left end spot because he was getting them, but your right defensive end is supposed to be your sack guy. So Robert Quinn getting the sacks made sense. D law stopping the run made sense. You know what I mean? So plus D law was the most double team, uh, DN in the league and Robert Quinn was as well. So I think we're going to be a little better inside, whether it be three tech and one tech. So I think D law gets back to being as good as he can be. Plus he had the off season off and the shoulder surgeon and all. It was a big mess with D law. I think he's, he's, he's coming back. He's going to be hungry. He's going to be ready to work. I think D law is going to be D law. Tyron Crawford, we, we got to get him back in shape and we're going to see what's going to happen with him. Randy Gregory, y'all know, I think he's the best thing since sliced bread, man. Y'all know how I feel about Randy Gregory, but he's probably going to be a little rusty coming off the couch, man. So giving Randy Gregory about five games to get his feet up under him, I think Randy's going to come in and he's going to be just fine. He's going to be the pass rusher. Tyron Crawford's going to be more of your rundown guy and we're just going to move on and be cool with it. Tell me if you like these, uh, these blog videos, these soliloquy videos these sit down these heart to hearts these conversations tell me if you like them man i like them a lot bro i mean they're i love being able to talk without fussing with y'all and i love fussing with y'all like the live streams ain't going nowhere but boy it's just some some refreshing about me just getting that filibuster off and not having um and not having to fight with <laughs> filibuster off hey appreciate y'all for tuning in um i probably try to do one of these a week don't hold me to that um even when the season comes around, I'll probably just like recap that week in blog form or whatever. Uh, I'm really doing this to practice for um, for my second channel, for Vach's Voice and all that. I'm going to keep blogging when that gets here. I'm going to keep doing film and all that when that channel gets here. But I'm just practicing being on camera and all that and talking to no damn body. All right? Y'all hold down for the Doski Watson Peace and Whiskey, man.